What's up guys? Welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Ardell and in today's video we're going to be covering the top four angling gambit traps. This is really an option against d4 in which case we simply hand white a pawn and I must warn y'all this opening is not sound. There are ways for white to get a better position against it. That being said, these are traps that white falls for all the time. Most of the time here England gambit players continue with knight c6 and queen e7. More on that in a moment. But we can also play this move of bishop c5. This is particularly useful in online chess. We've seen Eric Rosen play this move all the time. Many of you are probably wondering, okay, wait, why am I saying online chess and not just chess in general? Well, let's say here white plays a move like knight f3. We're now going to play d6 and actually pre-move our knight to e7, right? The whole idea being if white here captures off the pawn, all of a sudden there's going to be a knight on e7 and white will go, oh, wait a second, they accidentally played this move. If we play this in an over-the-board game, they're going to know something's up, right? But in online chess, they're going, okay, wait a second, I just took the pawn, all of a sudden knight e7 was played, I can simply snatch this knight off. But notice here, we don't have to just trade off queens. In fact, we can distract the king from defending the queen. This king simply cannot hold on. The king's got to take the bishop. We snatch this queen off, and we're simply winning. See, I wanted to mention that idea of bishop c5 here, and against a move like knight f3, playing d6, and pre-moving knight e7, hoping that white just continues to chomp down the pawns and the minor piece on e7. But again, most of the time here, England Gambit players go with knight c6, right? Attacking the pawn on e5, and most of the time here, white's just going to play a move like knight f3, right? Why not develop your piece? and also hang on to this pawn at the same time. But here we're going to play a somewhat unusual looking move of queen e7. Notice we now have two attacking pieces on the centralized pawn. And you know, sometimes your opponent will play a move like knight c3 and just give you the pawn back. But oftentimes your opponent will simply play this move of bishop f4, right? I mean, why not continue to develop and hang on to that extra pawn, which is a very strong pawn at this current moment. I mean, it's attacking squares like d6 and f6 as well. Well, guys, in this case, we now have the option of queen b4 with check. And because this bishop came out, we're not just checking the king, but we're attacking the bishop and the pawn on b2. Now there is a way here for white to get a better game, but it's actually pretty hard. In fact, if you look on the Leech Chess database, white fumbles this position all the times. In fact, this move of queen d2 has been played over 20,000 times, and against this, black is simply winning. We're going to snatch off that pawn on b2. Notice we're just wanting to win this rook, and here if white plays this move of queen c3, which by the way has been played almost 15,000 times on Leech Chess, we can now play bishop b4. Right, And I almost didn't even want to include this as a trap because it's so simple. Queen c3 and we simply pin the queen to the king on e1. But this trap has happened so often in online chess, I had to include it. So y'all, there's this move of queen d2, right? In which case, okay, we just snatch off the pawn and we're going to win a rook. Or we're going to pin your queen if you try to save your rook. What about this move of bishop d2? Well, in this case, yet again, we're going to take on b2. And the best option here for white is actually knight c3. But y'all, this move of bishop c3 has been played nearly 70,000 times on Lee Chess. And yet again, black is simply winning this after bishop b4. Okay, we're attacking this bishop. And by the way, if white snatches off our dark squared bishop, we can now play knight takes b4. We're attacking both the rook and threatening knight takes c2 a check. There is simply no way for white to stop both. So bishop takes b4 simply loses. What about this move of queen d2? Well, in this case, we're going to snatch off that bishop. Notice here, if knight takes c3, we simply win the rook. And if queen takes c3, it may seem as if for a moment white has held on. But now we just slide our queen into c1. And uh, let's just say we just won this game in eight moves. See, so, all that covers the third trap in the England. I mean, bishop c3 here, we play bishop b4 and we're simply winning. I mean, we're just threatening to snatch off that minor piece. And if white tries to defend it, okay, we'll trade down with queen c1 available, and this king simply is not going to have anywhere to go. What happens here if your opponent is prepped for the theory? You may see this move of knight c3. Now, this is the best option for white playing bishop d2, followed by knight c3. And against this, we're now going to continue with bishop b4, right? Trying to really pin down this knight. Yet again, if your opponent has really studied the theory, they're going to play rook b1, followed by knight d5. And in this case, we're simply going to snatch off the bishop, and play king d8. Now, okay, after this move of e4, white is simply better, right? I mean, white plays e4, we capture on a2, the rook goes to d1. In that case, we'll probably play a move like h6 to, uh, to try to keep the queen out of g5. But here, white may be very tempted to play queen g5 with check, right? In fact, this simply seems winning, and I've seen other YouTubers say that this move is winning for white. But y'all, this is another trap. 
because we have this idea of knight g e7. And here white is technically winning after a move like e4, but white may be tempted to simply snatch off this pawn, right? I mean, why not just check the king, take this pawn, attack the rook, here white up a point of material. It just seems as if black's position is falling apart, but now we play this move of rook g8, right? Attacking the queen. And it doesn't really matter where this queen goes, right? I mean, let's just say the queen captures on f7. We're going to play queen a5 with check, attacking this king. And notice that this knight is going to fall, even with this queen defending it. A move like knight c3, thank you for the knight. A move like knight b4, yet again, thank you for the knight. And here if a move like knight d2, well, we're going to slide over with the queen. We're not going to take with the knight here, obviously, because the rook would fall. But queen takes d5. Here we're simply up a point in material and black with a crushing position. Thank you guys for watching today's video and special thanks to everyone who has become a patron. My goal is to make this chess thing go full time and you're all helping me create better chess content and drop it more often. If you'd like to see my entire chess gambits playlist, click that playlist to the left. If you'd like to see my entire perk defense playlist, click that playlist to the right. Leave a comment down below to let me know what other videos you'd like to see covered on this channel. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.